Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I'm going to start off with some what's the deal with stuff. What is the deal with Amazon? <laughs> I'm not saying they've gotten worse per se, but they're different. For instance, sometimes when you go to buy a common item like a wastebasket, it, now it'll be like, oh, you'll have it in 10 days. I'm like, what the hell? It's a wastebasket. It's your recommended wastebasket. It's like, but then other stuff gets there like super fast. Like it almost feels like you just buy it and it's there. The other thing is that I don't like my stuff put on the ground. I don't like food put on the ground. I don't like anything I bought put on the ground. It's the ground. Why? <laughs> All of a sudden, humans are being fed the same way cats are, stray cats. So I always try to like catch the delivery person coming up. And without fail, I will go out. I will like step outside, walk a couple feet, put my hands out, and... They'll walk past me to set it down on my front door. It's literally like I'm invisible. And sometimes I'll even say, like, here, I'll take that. And they'll give me. So this just happened. He had three boxes. He put one in my hand and he put the other two on the ground. Um, I'm literally going to have to start doing like a football move and like blocking them. Um, and it's not like a mask thing because they will get closer to me to walk past me to set it like right there on my doorstep. So I'm going to have to, it's going to be pretty funny. So anyway, um, don't contact uh, the person. Uh, well, I mean, it's not even a person. It's like a blog. Uh, but don't contact the blog uh, in any way, shape or form because this is part of the life cycle of uh, SJWs harassing people. So before I start, 499 graphic novel. Uh, I think this is I think Narwhal is assembling the print file. He wanted to go back and change one person to make them more on model. In my opinion, with his cartoony style, like there's a wider range of what is considered on model, but he just redrew one face and uh, now that's good. So I believe he's creating the print file uh, right now. Rock and roll ninja ahead of schedule. I've got whew, a lot of work today. I got the pages lettered for the Nexus comic book. That is an add-on or a bundle with Impossible Stars. Half of Impossible Stars has gotten uh, lettered, so I got to check that. And I finished the dialogue for Jawbreaker's Grand Bazaar. And then I got to go double check it because I finished it at like 2 in the morning. So sometimes you type weird stuff at 2 in the morning. Um, but I also got to add in the sound effects, which I kind of feel like... <laughs> I just want to tell letters, just put sound effects where they're appropriate. Like, I don't need to, like, just general explosion punch. But I'm told that it's expected that the writer, you know, write it out. Uh, so, uh, anyway, so I saw this and I got um, bothered. Uh, Perch has this bit he does where, I guess, like, two years ago, at the beginning of the year, he just thought it would be funny to write down what SJWs were pissed about on any particular day. And it always seems very petty in retrospect. The funny thing, he did that even with just an offset of one week. And it still seemed like, Meghan Markle, was that, was that interview like five years ago? Or was it three weeks ago? It's hard to tell. Uh, so I guess the latest thing that they're bothered by is, is cats. Uh, cat charities. Okay. So uh, Peter Samedi, publisher of Alternate Comics, yesterday put up, uh, some of you know, but many don't. The money raised from this weekend's art auctions on the Alterna and Ethan Van Skyver YouTube channels will help us cover Lovey's upcoming vet bills. A big thanks to all that bid, and especially those that purchased a piece. I'm guessing a piece of art and not a piece of Lovey. Uh, so um, th this person, this blog says, and I need you to pay attention to literally everything. So Ethan used this phrase night letter and sometimes he uses it inexpertly. This comes from Afghanistan. And that would be if the Taliban saw you talking to American forces, if they, I mean, if they thought you helped them, they just kill you. But even just sometimes just talking to them, uh, they would put a note on your front door. We saw you, we see everything. You better stop or you're gonna get it. Now you can slide this message under the door you can most of the uh households that have this outer retaining wall you can tie it to a rock and throw it over the retaining wall they post it to the outside of the front door so that everyone in the village sees it they want to terrorize not just the inhabitants but everyone so a night letter is issued publicly if it's the same thing the same verbiage but it's just emailed to you or sent through Facebook, you know, Messenger or whatever. 
Uh, that's intimidation. It's definitely an intimidation tactic, but it's not technically a night letter. This is the epitome of a night letter. We, every single stage of this. Um, so um, um, I don't know if you are unaware. So, okay, so first of all, boom, this is like night letter 101. First of all, these people obsess about Comicsgate, anyone they think is remotely related to Comicsgate, Comicsgate adjacent. It's literally cooties. It's the cooties game from elementary school. But they know it's going to come off weird if they say, Hi, I'm obsessively stalking you and all of your peers. Basically everyone you've ever talked to. I obsessively stalk you and harass you. You got to act like you were just, I don't know, you were just walking down the street. And you just found out, oh, um, oh my gosh, what's this on the sidewalk? <laughs> it's a printout of a tweet. So they always have to act like they casually and accidentally found out this information. And they're just in a neighborly way trying to intimidate you. Um, I don't know if you are unaware. This is another tactic they always do. So it's 2021. The idea that anyone remotely related to the American comic book industry is not aware of Comicsgate, that some people like it, that some people don't like it. Vaguely, who is, you know, uh, they are really into it or just they're just friends with people who are really into it. You don't have to explain to a publisher that Ethan Van Skyver is connected to Comicsgate. Everyone knows this. But they do this thing where they try to give you an easy out. Um, because if you genuflect, if you do this easy out, it's good for two reasons. They got to intimidate you, but they also get to laugh at your obsequiousness. They get to laugh at your cowardice. So they'll say, you know what? You probably just didn't know. So if you have no spine, you can go, oh my gosh, thank you. I didn't know. Oh my gosh, these are bad people. Thank you for intimidating me in a neighborly fashion. Um, I don't know if you are unaware, but EVS is not someone you want to be associated with. He's been an integral part of the Comicsgate hate group. Okay, so hate group is something they started a few years ago, and they do this for a very specific reason. Not because Comicsgate is actually a hate group. As far as I know, I barely even kept tabs on this shit in like three years. I think there's like four different factions. But every single platform of any kind has a rule against hate groups. So their plan is that if you start describing someone or something as a hate group, eventually they will fall afoul of the trust and safety of all these different apps and they will get banned. And you won't have to do anything specific. They can just say, oh, um, Peter Samedi, he's been connected to Comicsgate, which is a hate group. And they're like, okay, fine. Everyone connected to Comicsgate. Uh, you're just, you're gone. You're gone off this platform. Um, let's not even get into how insulting that is to the victims of actual hate groups that you would put your internet Twitter beef on the same level. Alterna doesn't do anything with them, does it? That would be a bit of a bummer to learn. So he actually gives them two easy outs. He gives Peter a chance to genuflect and say, okay, I know Ethan is part of Comicsgate, but that was just me and it's just me trying to raise money for my pet. Uh, but no, my comic book company has nothing to do with anyone who even associates with anyone who even likes Comicsgate. So then uh, Peter responds, uh, I don't know if you're aware. So Peter is very keenly aware of intimidation tactics. He's been a target and a victim of them uh, for years. So he knows right away that this is a night letter. So he actually turns it around on him with some of the uh, standard verbiage for a, a SJW night letter. I don't know if you're aware, but Comicsgate isn't a hate group and EVS isn't part of a hate group either. Since you weren't aware before, you're aware now. Have a great one. So Peter is well versed in this. <laughs> this was this was expert level. So uh, then, since this is a blog, this person says we instead of I. Um, I strongly disagree on the kind of people found in Comicsgate and the kind of person EVS is. I'm sorry, but I am now feeling I may be unable to support Alterna now. If you associate with Comicsgate and EVS. I wish you the best, though. So on the way out, he's giving like one more chance for Peter to get on his knees and beg him. Except for Peter. 
has achieved Super Saiyan level. And even if he got to his knees, he doesn't, he floats five feet above the ground in an energy bubble. So he'd still be above you. If this is all news to you, then you haven't supported Alterna or myself in years. All the best. <laughs> that is. Wow, that is devastating. When you find yourself sneaking around whispering to other people that they don't want to be seen talking to, quote, the wrong people, unquote, then stop immediately and consider that you're the one spreading hate. A hate mob targets people and lies about them. They don't just help them spread hate. By saying, you may not be aware, you think you're in the loop filling us in. We are very aware that a group of ugly industry types spent a year spreading an ugly lie about a peer, it's actually been like three or four years, in hopes of destroying his career. And we know the same tactic could be used against any of us. None of us are perfect. Nobody, not me, not you. We all have the right to be wrong sometimes and to even just say a stupid thing or two. That doesn't make us literally Hitler and doesn't justify destroying a man's career and his family. But within an hour, he has a blog up about it. I can no longer support the comic publisher Alterna due to their association with a hate group known as Comicsgate. I've made a post about it. So you keep calling something a hate group without explaining how it is one. This is a common tactic. And then he responds, I'm not going to argue with you, Peter. This is, this is a minor tactic, but in a conversation where both people know both their name and the other person's name, when you're well into that conversation and you use someone's name, you're trying to establish dominance over it. If you want to make your bed with Comicsgate, that's your choice. Mine is to no longer support your books with my dollars or review stuff like when you would email me asking. My final thoughts are posted. And that's all I have to say about Alterna for the rest of time. <laughs> I can no longer support the publisher Alterna due to their Comicsgate association. I've written about how awful Comicsgate is. Comicsgate is a movement that is mostly gone, but pieces of it still kick around being hateful and awful. So this is another thing that SJWs do. They've always defeated Comicsgate, but it's always still there. It, it basically is an attempt to make comics, quote, good again. In the sense, there are no politics, well, no liberal politics, no inclusivity, and it imagines an era of comics that never existed. Okay, so this is full of lies. We have not said we don't want any politics ever, at any point, in any time, no matter what the quality. We've said no politics in a vague way, in which you still like Watchmen, you still like the John Walker storyline in Captain America, you just don't want far left to extremist left politics promulgated constantly with the other side, which is sometimes just middle-of-the-road Democrat politics almost never being shown. There is literally every type of person in comics gate. And the era of comics that never existed is, is essentially the 1990s. <laughs> you know, if, if you were to describe uh, not, comics gate comics, they tend to fall into mainstream and indie comics from the 1990s. Comics gate members often harass and insult others. Dox innocent comic creators and otherwise are awful. That is a very interesting turn of phrase. Dox innocent comic creators. The implication is that if you have deemed a comic creator bad in some way, that that's allowed. You just can't dox the innocent ones. And are and otherwise are awful. Apparently the publisher of Alterna, Peter Semetti, is close with Comicsgate and people who have done a lot with the quote organization unquote, such as Ethan Van Skyver. That is not good. Peter Semetti wanted to raise money for his sick cat. Ethan Van Skyver helped with that. And you decided that this was the opportunity to intimidate this man who's been through hell, who's actually been swatted, actually been doxxed, but for a little bit of internet clout to get some attention, to make you feel good about yourself and pat yourself on the back, you just needed to add to the 1,000 heaping of abuse and targeted harassment, which is what you are doing to him, show me the period in history where a bunch of sanctimonious bullies harassed people, in some cases drove them to suicide, and the historians 50 years later are like, 
Yeah, we really needed that. I mean, people were telling jokes. They were raising money for sick cats. It was anarchy. I basically thought Alterna was just a fun indie publisher who sometimes reached out to me so I could review their works. I didn't really follow their social media, but when Peter would email me about their stuff to review in the past, I would. I followed him on Twitter a bit ago and saw odd little things that gave me pause, but nothing outright supporting Comicsgate. Then this Twitter exchange happened. So he had to write this blog and then screenshot everything. If Peter Sumetti didn't want to be targeted and harassed for the 1,000th time, and he just wanted to delete the original tweet so all this was gone, this bully here is going to make sure it's eternal, everlasting. I wasn't going to argue with him on his Twitter page, as that is his own little place. I just told him I couldn't support him anymore. He called me hateful, which is ironic. No, that's actually not ironic. <laughs> it's like that song, Ironic, by Alanis Morissette, where most of the things aren't ironic, they're just bummers. Um, it's not ironic that he called you hateful. It's accurate. It's a bummer that you're hateful, but none of this is, quote, ironic. We're on my blog now, though. So this is my house, and you know full damn well I'm going to drop some knowledge. Comicsgate is unquestionably a hate group. Ethan Van Sky... I'm sorry. Uh, please look at the screen. I'm reading this. Ethan Van Skyver is a huge garbage person, and I will never, ever support Alterna again, having seen this full-throated endorsement of Comicsgate from them. I, I actually didn't see an endorsement. I just He just basically said, yeah, I, I hang out with these people. I'm sorry that my sick cat charity art auction was bothering you. I don't know how Peter became so misled as to want to have his, quote, fans, unquote, be members of a hate group, but that's his choice. My choice is to never support Alterna ever again with my dollars or ever review any of their works if they reach out to beg, beg, for some exposure for their books. I don't support hate. Oh, but you do. <laughs> oh, but you do. You gave no evidence that Comicsgate, any of their multiple factions, is a hate group. But you, sir, are full of hate. You, sir, engage in targeted harassment. You, sir, in this days of Stop Asian Hate, specifically targeted an Asian publisher. I just want to reiterate the form and format of a night letter. It's going to start off casually. They're going to pretend that they're not obsessively stalking you, that they're not full of hate, that they just were walking down the street and this information just appeared before them. They're going to give you, and we saw this one, actually three ways to bend the knee. As long as you bow before them and give in to them and give in to their hate and support their lies, they'll ease off on you. The problem is you're always going to be stained. So you might as well just lean into it. Peter did a great job using their verbiage against them where he said so now you know <laughs> so uh it's going to start casual they're going to give you a chance to pretend that you didn't know something that they have deemed uh wrong think uh to come back to the fold but you're never going to be able to go back to the fold if you don't immediately acquiesce to them they're going to deem you as supporting everything that everyone you speak to believes in and they're going to attempt to unperson you harm your business, harm your career. And then they're going to immortalize it in things like this, which cannot be deleted unless the person who wrote it deletes it. Uh, these are tactics of the Nazi era Gestapo, of the communist East Germany era Stasi, and of the current era Taliban. So anyway, thanks for watching. 499 graphic novel. Rock and Roll Ninja graphic novel and I will have and I will have new comic reviews up all this week. Thanks. Bye.